Hello everyone, and welcome to part one of our Sydney Water Series. I'm Mike, and this is Sydney History. The tank stream was the lifeblood supporting the first European settlers back in 1788, and a sustainable water source for the Gadigal people before them. In fact, it's the reason why the city of Sydney is where it is today, supporting the early colony for the first 38 years. On the 18th of January, 1788, Captain Arthur Phillip and the ships of the First Fleet sailed into Botany Bay. Botanist Joseph Banks, who visited the bay himself 18 years earlier, suggested that the bay would be the perfect place to set up the new colony. However, when Philip arrived, he deemed the bay's shallow waters, sandy soils and lack of fresh water an unsuitable place to set up camp. So he sailed off up the coast through the heads of Port Jackson, where he found Sydney Cove and the Tank Stream. The Tank Stream was a fresh water supply, fed from a teardrop-shaped swampy high ground, which was located up near the west side of Hyde Park, as far south as Park Street and narrowing into the mouth of the stream just north of where Market Street is today. From here the water would drop 30 metres in elevation via a series of small cascading waterfalls as it made its journey along an 800 metre picturesque tree covered valley where it would come to meet the shoreline of Sydney Cove where Pitt Street meets Bridge Street today. The water was cleansed and filtered through a series of spongy mosses and undergrowth as it seeped through the catchment area, making its way to the stream sandstone base. As the settlers started to build their new camp in the days after the January 26 landing, the stream split the colony socially as well as geographically, with officers and governors on the east side and soldiers and convicts on the west side in a hilly area with sandstone cliffs known as the rocks today. However, the stream's fresh water didn't flow all year round, like the rivers and creeks did back in Britain. And during a drought in 1790, Captain Arthur Phillip instructed convicts to cut three storage tanks into the sandstone bedrock next to the stream. It's from these tanks that the tank stream gets its name, and each tank was capable of holding 20,000 litres of fresh water, and they were up to five metres deep. Using satellite imagery overlaid with an old map from 1807, we've been able to accurately pinpoint the location of those tanks today, which lie on the junction of Hamilton Street and Curtin Place. Early attempts were made to try and protect the colony's water supply, which was increasingly becoming under threat from contamination as the population hit 2,000 by 1790. Philip enclosed the tank stream in a paling fence to try and keep pigs and other livestock from muddying the water. And in 1795, when Governor Hunter arrived, he made orders creating a green belt of 15 metres each side of the stream, preventing the grazing of livestock, construction of buildings and cutting down of trees within this green zone. Polluters faced punishments which included public floggings, fines and even the demolition of properties. But these efforts were in vain. As the droughts continued and the land cleared of trees due to population increase, the pollution only got worse. Runoff from slaughterhouses and tanneries drained into the stream, along with human and animal waste. The tank stream was slowly dying under the pressure as the town grew. In 1803, Governor King decided it was time to replace the existing wooden bridge which had been in location at the junction of Bridge and Pitt Street since October 1788. The bridge was much larger and made of sandstone, capable of allowing small seagoing vessels to pass underneath it at high tide. However, the bridge soon collapsed in 1804 due to poor workmanship and heavy rains that year. Repair work started immediately and it was back in service by 1806 and it's believed by some that the bridge's stone foundations may still exist right here underneath the street. By 1826, the tank stream had become an unofficial sewer when Governor Brisbane disallowed it for drinking purposes and in 1857, it was officially designated as part of the City of Sydney's sewer system. By the mid-1800s, town planners decided to make Circular Quay into a semi-circle shape. This meant the tank stream had to be extended 200 metres, as the tidal mudflats from Bridge Street to where the quay is today were filled in with dirt. At the other end of the stream, the Bennelong Point combined sewer and stormwater system was completed in 1857, a year before London's own big stink. This elaborate series of underground pipes and tunnels was the city's first planned sewerage system. It served the more elevated parts of Sydney's central business district, from the east side of Hyde Park as far south as Park Street, where the sewer's ventilation stack still stands till this day. However, the new sewer had the effect of draining away the last remnants of the original swamp that once supplied the tank stream and the colony its fresh water. This further added to the stream's death, as the cleansing effects of the swamp's waters were now gone forever. As the years went on, 
The people of Sydney grew tired of the overpowering stench and disease from the tank stream, which was nothing more than an open sewer and stormwater drain at this time. In turn, there were calls for it to be abolished or made into an underground tunnel, with work starting on the section between Bridge Street and Hunter Street in 1860. The form of covering used in this section was a sandstone arched roof, built over the top of the stream's natural sandstone bedrock, which convicts chiselled out into a V-shape to improve water flow back in 1790. In 1866, the section between Hunter Street and Martin Place was converted into an open stone channel. This was covered over four years later in 1870, with the now famous oviform arch tunnel resembling the shape of an egg. A decade later in 1880, the last uncovered section of the tank stream would disappear from the public eye forever. The section from Martin Place to King Street was covered over, once again using the brick oviform tunnel method, which presented superior strength and drainage qualities. Today, the tank stream continues to serve the city of Sydney as a stormwater drain, controlled and managed by Sydney Water. Sections of the stream have been cut out and modified over the last century, and its five metre deep storage tanks, which were once the new colony's safeguard in times of drought, are thought to have been destroyed when the basements of modern skyscrapers penetrated at shallow depths. And while no one can see it anymore on a day-to-day -day basis, a lucky few can get the chance to tour a small section, with tickets allocated via lottery twice a year. Back above ground, tank stream enthusiasts can get to see artefacts that have been dug up over the decades and put on display in a small museum in the basement of the old GPO building in Martin Place with an original cutout section of the brick oviform tunnel being one of the museum's highlights, along with over 200 pieces of ceramics that had washed into the stream over the years and were rediscovered during renovation works of the General Post Office in the 1990s. But for most Sydney siders, the tank stream lives on in name only, with places like the Tank Stream Way, the Tank Stream Pub and even Bridge Street. And where the stream's head once flowed into Sydney Cove, a fountain now stands acting as a connection to the past reminding us of the types of flora and fauna that once lined the stream's banks. Well, there you have it, everyone. Once the lifeblood and reason for the location of Sydney, it's nothing more than a stormwater drain today, existing only buried underneath a valley of roads and skyscraper buildings. I hope you enjoyed part one of our Sydney Water series. You can find links to other parts in the series in the description section below as they become available. And if you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe buttons and consider sharing this video with a friend if you think it's worth it. Anyway, I'm Mike, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.